I try to show my students uh, where uh, the labor management relationship came from. And of course, for, for decades, uh, actually for centuries, it uh, was run by the golden rule. Uh, those who had the gold ruled. And of course, in this case, it was uh, management and uh, corporations. And it wasn't until uh, the Great Depression, the election of Franklin Roosevelt, and the establishment uh, of the New Deal in the 1930s, uh, where labor finally got a, a fair shake. And that really begins uh, the modern day uh, labor management relationship. Rhode Island uh, will always uh, be unique in labor and uh, business history especially uh, because Slater Mill, uh, which was established in the early 1790s on the banks of the uh, Blackstone River, uh, was uh, inarguably the uh, first uh, factory uh, in the New World. And if you go to the uh, Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce, uh, they will pull a thesaurus out and say it was the cradle of industrial civilization, the uh, birthplace of the free enterprise system, uh, the genesis of uh, uh, the industrial world as we know it today. And they're absolutely right. If you go to the AFL-CIO and ask them, they'll say, well, yes, it was the birthplace of child labor. Uh, it was the cradle of the exploitation of uh, female workers especially. And uh, it was uh, uh, a spot where uh, wage labor replaced slave labor. And of course, they're right too. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Rhode Island really uh, uh, started it all. And uh, Slater's Mill's experience uh, really uh, uh, put a fingerprint on this state. We had the Rhode Island system, uh, which employed sometimes six, seven, eight kids from the same family. And when you look at Massachusetts later on, when they begin to build their textile uh, empire, they go out of their way to avoid the Rhode Island system. They try to treat their people better. Uh, Rhode Island would have a long history, uh, the worst record of child labor abuse of any state in New England. Uh, we had more working women uh, in the mills and factories in Rhode Island than any other state in the Union. Uh, so this was a place where uh, exploitation was very ripe, but it also uh, provided the opportunity and the wherewithal uh, for people to join unions so they could have a say and, and try to earn a better life. Rhode Island was once a beehive of what was known as the Industrial Revolution. And so there were a lot of unions here, yet strangely enough, um, there were very few opportunities uh, for working people or their union offices to uh, get an education in that area. Everything was always geared, uh, it seemed, to the opposite. Um, and actually, URI uh, led the charge, and actually most people don't even know about this, but back in the 1940s, uh, they set up a, uh, a labor studies program, uh, and it lasted down through about the 1960s, and for whatever reason, uh, fell apart. But uh, uh, Dr. Ted Schmidt, uh, when he got here with his degree in industrial relations, uh, had a dream of setting up a labor research center. Back in the early 80s, or even before that, uh, Ted Schmidt, who was a professor of labor relations in the business school, uh, saw a need um, for a center that uh, did research and provided academic training for professionals in the field of labor relations. Um, he thought there was a real uh, void in that um, within the state of Rhode Island and even within the region. Back in the early 1980s, it was determined by a committee of faculty from several departments that we needed an academic research and outreach program that would relate to the industrial and labor relations needs of the union, management, and neutral communities. From the very beginning, the faculty was determined to relate to two reasonably different types of student. One would be the graduate student coming directly out of an undergraduate program.
My name is Jamie Barnes and I'm a graduate assistant here at the um, Labor Research Center. This is my second year in the master's program and I will be graduating in May. Then we have a, a large group of professionals in the field, people that work for trade unions, people that work um, for organizations um, in the human resource department. Um, these are more experienced professionals coming back uh, for training. When I came here, um, I thought it would be a good idea to take a couple of courses in labor relations since my educational background really didn't include any. And Ted Schmidt had just started a uh, master's program always, always in, this, in the beginning uh, part of the process for establishing a master's degree at, labor, at uh, the university. So I signed up for a couple of courses. It really was, uh, I hate to say it, but it was really like a lark to do that. He got the program started, and uh, I thought, well, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to finish up a master's degree with uh, at URI. I'd already had a bachelor's degree from URI, so I took a few more courses, and I was hooked. <laughs> What's fairly unique about our center is it's uh, neutral um, and what we call tripartite. It tries to integrate the perspectives of management, labor, and government. And we prepare um, students uh, for roles in all these institutions. I'm actually applying to more graduate schools for doctoral programs. If for some reason graduate school doesn't work out, um, I will apply to work for unions, um, probably um, at a headquarters for an international, doing research or um, something else like that, because I, I feel that work is integral to everyone's lives. So if I want to help someone, the best way that I can possibly do that is to help them get as much as they possibly can for the work that they do. One thing uh, that, that we uh, uh, try to uh, accomplish is uh, put people on uh, both sides of the fence in the same room together, not that they're not used to that anyway, uh, but we try to give them the, uh, uh, the wherewithal, either books, articles, experience, uh, so that they can hash out their problems and come to some type of an agreement together. One of the things that's happened and one of the things we tend to promote is um, a collaborative view of labor relations um, as opposed to a more um, adversarial role of labor relations <laughs> where unions and management work in concert to promote the benefit of, of the organization and the shareholders and the employee groups. And we've um, done things like form labor management committees in the past. Um, we promote something called interest-based bargaining where in the process of collective bargaining you try to find out the true interest of both parties or the true benefits sought and try to find innovative and creative solutions um, to, uh, to solving the, these particular problems through the collective bargaining process. So we try to give people the tools uh, to come to conclusions on these issues rather than send them out uh, like you would uh, uh, shirts to a dry cleaner. Uh, you can do it at home. From what I've seen, we have a, a very good reputation, uh, again, because of the mixture of our students. Uh, they go out, and you may have somebody in, in management, or business, or personnel relations who has a master's degree. Uh, and, and so people say, wow, they're very professionally trained. Um, in Rhode Island, where there still are a lot of unions, you probably want uh, your personnel people to know where unions came from and what they're doing today. You may want to do that simply to work with them, or if they're not there, you want to learn, and if I were management, I'd always want to know this, is how do you keep the union out? And I've always said it's by treating people the right way. Um, so that when people see our folks out there, they know that they're uh, very cognizant and very uh, intelligent uh, about the issues uh, at hand. And uh, again, we have a number of labor leaders walking around with an MA uh, stuck in their back pocket. Uh, we've got people at Fidelity, we've got people all over the place uh, in management and personnel who uh, uh, I think have uh, uh, developed very good records for themselves and by implication the Labor Research Center. It's a terrific program. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I told you when we started this, I, I started out as a lark, but uh, it became a, a very uh, interesting intellectual and academic challenge for me. Even though I have a bachelor's degree and had a law degree at the time, it added tremendously to uh, what I do here and, and the people that I deal with. It gives you a whole different insight and perspective to it. I think it's a great program.
I would recommend it to anybody who wants to be associated in this field in any way.